In the last video we discussed repeated integration by parts, where the integral of VDU is itself a product of unrelated functions and we must perform an additional integration by parts to derive an expression for it. However, in the case of integrals involving exponential and trigonometric functions, a cycle emerges where we eventually end up deriving in part what we started out with. Consider the example the integral of e to the x cos x dx. Here we have the integral of two unrelated functions which we know how to integrate. As neither is a power function, we can choose either for u and we'll end up with the same answer. Here I'm going to choose u as cos x and dv as e to the x dx. So differentiating u, we have that du dx is equal to minus sine x. Multiplying across by dx, we have du equals minus sine x dx. While integrating dv, we have that v is equal to the integral of e to the x, so simply e to the x. So now the integral of e to the x cos x dx equals u times v, so cos x by e to the x minus the integral of v e to the x multiplied by minus sine x dx. And tidying this up we have e to the x cos x minus by minus gives us plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. What we have here is a repeated integration by parts. As to calculate the integral of e to the x cos x dx, we must first calculate the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So now calculating our second integration by parts, the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Again, I will pick u as a trigonometric term. So u equals sine x. That means that du dx equals cos x and du equals cos x dx and dv equals e to the x dx. So integrating we have v equals e to the x. So now the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals u times v. So sine x multiplied by e to the x minus the integral of v times du, so e to the x cos x dx. And tidying this up, we have e to the x sine x minus the integral e to the x cos x dx. So it might seem that we have not made much progress, as in our integral for e to the x sine x dx, we have derived an integral for e to the x cos x dx. However, remember this is what we originally started out with. So now by substituting in this value for the integral of e to the x sine x dx, we can come up with an algebraic expression for the integral of e to the x cos x dx. So returning to our main integral, we have that the integral of e to the x cos x dx equals e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx, which we just found out was e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cos x dx. So substituting in this value we have e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cos x dx. And now that we've finished integrating we can add on a constant plus c. So tidying this up we have e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cos x dx. So you can see we now have an algebraic expression which involves what we started out with on both the left hand and the right hand side. So by considering this integral as a variable we can bring over what's on the right hand side to the left hand side and solve for this integral. So bringing over the integral of e to the x cos x dx to the left hand side we have the integral of e to the x cos x dx plus the integral of e to the x cos x dx 
equals e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x plus c. We can add both these integrals together to get 2 the integral of e to the x cos x dx equals e to the x taking out the common factor into cos x plus sine x plus c. And now finally if we divide across by 2 we have that the integral of e to the x cos x dx equals e to the x over 2 into cos x plus sine x plus some constant d where d equals c over 2.